My parents had a very unconventional attitude towards traveling. Every year, we traveled to foreign and exotic places in hopes of finding new adventures. My mother hated the idea of flying to a tropical country to, in order to sit all day long by the pool. She always planned these exciting adventures that made my friends question whether I would come back in one piece. We went to Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Jordan, Azerbaijan, and many other countries that were not the typical tourist destinations. However, I'd like, I won't have enough time to talk about all my experiences and all my adventures, as we'd be sitting here all night long, and still, I don't think we'd be done with everything. However, I'd like to talk about a country that I visited this summer, India. As I said before, I was used to different customs, different cultures, different traditions, so why was India different? Why did I have so many thoughts and feelings about a country that, at first glance, wasn't so different from all of the other countries that I've been to? Imagine this. You fly for a whole day and a whole night with huge suitcases and enormous jet lag. You get out, you're in an international airport. You get an overpriced taxi, you get out of the taxi, and you find yourself in the biggest, most enormous crowd you've ever been in. <laughs> the heat is unbearable. You can barely breathe through your nose, and the sound of honking cars is all you can hear. The smell is even worse. So I stood there in the middle of a crowd. I looked to the left, I looked to the right, and I found that everyone was looking at me. Here I was in the middle of the world, in the middle of India, in the middle of everything all, and, and I cried. <laughs> and I thought I, I thought I was used to all the heat and the crowds and everything in between, but there I was in the middle of it all, and and I found out something new about myself. I believe that this is India. She not only teaches you something new about yourself, but also about the world, the real world. I stayed in India for a whole month, and let me tell you this. She's definitely not easy to understand. She's someone that you either fall in love with as soon as you see her, or someone that you hate and never want to see again. For me, it wasn't love at first sight. I wanted to go back home as soon as I arrived. I hated the fact that people were coming up to me and wanting to take pictures of me. I hated the fact that I had to take my shoes off in buildings where the floor was completely covered in everything. <laughs> I, I was sad by the fact that people were living on the streets with nothing but a car carton box. But after some time, I adapted. And I saw a different side of India, a more beautiful one. And I found that there are lessons that she wants to give to us. Now, what you should know about India is that she's the home of many religions. I've never in my life been to so many mosques, Hindu, Buddhist temples, and Sikh shrines. But what was beautiful about seeing these temples was seeing how India respected you no matter what, no matter what religion you believed in. No matter if you're a Buddhist or Muslim or whatever you were, you'd be appreciated and accepted. People were proud to be who they are and wanted everyone else to encourage everyone else to be just what they are. They wanted to teach everyone about their religion as well as learn about others, and I found that new but inspiring at the same time. How, why, well, how did I start thinking about all of this? Well, I remember going to, flying to Dharamsala, a small village located in the Himalayan mountains. Not only is Dharamsala the, in the village of, and the hometown of Dalai Lama, but also it has a nice and calm and spiritual atmosphere to it. I remember going down the streets of Dharamsala and finding that people were smiling up to me. They came up to me when they saw me with the huge suitcases and took me to the hotel. When we were lost, they would take us to a destination and not expect anything in return. The people there were kind and... and I had no words. But this isn't why Dharamsala stuck in my mind and not why I have a vivid picture of it. The reason why is, well, let me get to that. 
we decided we would visit the Dalai Lama Temple, a small temple located up north. Why? Well, all the guides in the books said that we should visit the, the Dalai Lama Temple, so, so we went. We went inside, we took our shoes off, and then we saw a group of people sitting in a circle, sitting on praying mats and chanting mantras or drinking tea, eating bread, and, well, we decided to tiptoe inside, we sat down on the mat, and, of course, we were offered a cup of tea, and as we were sitting there, we realized that the fact that everyone was eating and drinking wasn't the most surprising aspect of it all. We looked around, and we realized that there was Hindus and Buddhists and Muslims and, and Sikhs and any kind of religion you wanted, just like us, gathered there, learning about Buddhism. Now, I remember feeling at one with the world, seeing how people with such different views and such different spectrums could sit in a room and, and want to learn about something else in themselves. That was inspiring. This got me thinking, does this happen in our European world? With refugee crisis and the constant battle with prejudice and xenophobia and discrimination, I think this is one of the main lessons that should be learned from India. All right, how many of us here think they spend enough time with their families? Raise up. Okay, I see, all right. Well, in India, family is taking as top priority. Nothing about family. How do I know this? Well, another story. Um, after a very, very long tour, a huge tour of one of the cities, we were invited to our tour guide's house. As we entered the house, we had his mother, his father, his wife, his grandchildren, his children, his sisters, and later on, his neighbors came around. We all sat again in a circle while drinking tea and eating bread, of course. We talked about various matters. We talked about India's economic situation, about poverty, about corruption. But we also talked about the community they live in. They told me a story about how during the winters, people from two villages away or just a block away would come up to their house in the same room as we were sitting and would tell each other stories by right? knitting and sewing and drinking tea, of course, and I was astonished. Wow. I don't remember saying more than hello to my neighbors, let alone remember the name, and th this all sounded surreal. Well, I think this is another example of a lesson that should be learned from India. We seem to be isolated in this bubble where it's always school work, school work, school work, and we sometimes forget to look up from our phones and realize that, hey, we should spend more time with, with our friends, with our family. Overall, India is a country that definitely is not easy to understand. There's many sides to her. She's beautiful, unpredictable, and scary at times. But I think when traveling to a country so different to our, from ours, it's important to have an open mind, to realize that there are lessons learned. India has taught me that we should appreciate diversity, that we should be kind to one another, <laughs> and that, in the end, we should keep our friends and family close to our hearts. <laughs> well. I think in the end, it's important to travel. Since we are the future, we should not be afraid of all of the le world lessons that should be learned from each country. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>